And joining us now is NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Mr. Secretary General, we want to welcome you to Face the Nation. NATO, in the most recent meeting, there was a lot of talk about terrorism. How does that relate to what's just happened overnight in London? What happened overnight in London just underlines the importance of stepping up the efforts to fight terrorism. And uh, NATO has an important role to play. Uh, uh, our biggest military operation ever, uh, our presence in Afghanistan, is about fighting terrorism, preventing Afghanistan from once again becoming a safe haven for international terrorists. And uh, we are in Afghanistan as a direct response uh, to a terrorist attack against the United States 9-11-2001. Uh, but what we decided uh, at the meeting last week uh, uh, was to step up our eff efforts uh, by joining the global coalition to fight uh, uh, ISIL and also to provide more direct support with our AWACS surveillance uh, planes. And NATO allies are in many different ways now uh, contributing to uh, a very important but uh, a, long, also a, a, a fight that will take time. Uh, to defeat ISIL and to uh, fight uh, uh, extremism. And so that NATO role extends now beyond Afghanistan into those AWACS planes helping in Syria and in Iraq as well, is that right? Yes, yeah, so first of all, NATO has done um, many things in the fight against terrorism for many years, but Afghanistan has been the biggest military operation. Uh, we are increasing our practical support uh, to the counter-ISIL uh, coalition uh, with training of uh, Iraqi forces with AWACS surveillance plans, helping to improve the air picture of Syria and Iraq. But we're also working with partners in the region, Jordan, Tunisia, to help them uh, keep their own countries stable. That's extremely uh, important in the fight against terrorism. And we're also strengthening our uh, work when it comes to intelligence. We have just uh, established a new division in the Alliance for Intelligence and to improve the ways we are uh, sharing intelligence. And the U.S. is playing a lead role in all of this. The uh, U.S. was strongly uh, pushing for NATO joining the coalition. President Trump personally uh, engaged in that issue, and I welcome the lead uh, of the U.S. in the fight against terrorism. You were prime minister uh, in 2011 when there was an attack in Norway. Does this uh, reflect on this moment in, in London based on your experience? I think what we see is that the, the terrorists, they want to change the way we live. Uh, they want to attack our open free societies, and the best response is to stand up for our open free societies and continue uh, to live the lives we want to live, uh, because then the terrorists will uh, lose. Uh, it also underlines the importance of doing many different things. We need many tools. We need to fight the ideology, uh, the extremism, uh, political, diplomatic means, but we also need military tools, as we uh, see, for instance, in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria. What's your response to the president's uh, departure from the Paris Accord this week? He has made his decision and we have heard uh, the reactions from uh, European uh, allies and I think this uh, uh, illustrates that NATO is an alliance of 28 democracies. Uh, we have seen differences before, going back to the Suez crisis in 56 to the Iraq war in 2003, but NATO has been able to rise above these differences and stand together, be united around our core task to defend and protect each other. And that's exactly what we are doing now. NATO has weathered uh, difficulties, but there, this isn't alone, the Paris Agreement departure. And there, there was also some uh, uh, confusion about the president's uh, behavior at the NATO meeting. Do you believe that President Donald Trump believes in the mission of NATO? Absolutely, uh, partly because this is a treaty obligation um, by all uh, allies, uh, part of the Washington Treaty, the founding uh, treaty of the alliance. Uh, second, because he has, in meetings with me in public when I met him in the White House last month, stated that he is committed uh, to NATO and his security team uh, has also stated that very clearly. But more important is that the U.S. is now increasing their military presence in Europe for the first time since the end of the, uh, second, uh, the, the, the Cold War. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and the president, President Trump, just suggested a 40 percent increase in funding for U.S. military presence uh, in Europe. Uh, we, we will have a new armored brigade, we will have more training, more equipment, more infrastructure. Uh, so uh, actions speak louder than words, and we see now actions, meaning uh, increased uh, U.S. presence in Europe. You mentioned words, critics say. The president didn't mention Article 5 during this NATO meeting, the idea that an attack on one is an attack on all. So is that overblown, people's fixation on his not mentioning that? First of all, he has stated several times that he's, he is committed to NATO and there is no way you can be committed to NATO without being committed to Article 5 because NATO is about Article 5, collective defense, uh, stand together, one for all, all for one. 
Second, it is in the US interest uh, to have a strong NATO because uh, two world wars and uh, the Cold War thought us that stability, peace in Europe is also important for the prosperity and the, and the stability or the security of uh, the United States. We have to remember that the only time NATO has invoked Article 5 was after an attack on the United States. Has President Trump's pressure on NATO members to pick up their commit commitments, their financial commitments, has that been effective? It has helped uh, to convey a very clear message about the need for increased defense uh, spending uh, uh, across Canada and Europe. And the good thing is that the European allies now understand that uh, we have to invest more in defense, uh, uh, not only to please the United States, but because it is in the interest of Europe to invest more in security because we live in a more dangerous world. And the good news is that defense spending now has started to increase uh, across uh, uh, Europe. Uh, we have stopped the cuts, we have started to increase and more allies will reach the 2% target this year or next year. All right, Mr. Secretary General, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.